a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. <laughs> oh, stupid Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? I want to learn only this from you. Did you receive the Spirit from works of the law or from faith in what you heard? Are you so stupid? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain, does then the one who supplies the Spirit to you and works mighty deeds among you do so from works of the law or from faith in what you heard? The word of the Lord. The word stupid in English has a certain connotation. It doesn't always have to be really strong. Sometimes it's just, oh man, that was stupid. I shouldn't have done that. And it just means, you know, I wasn't thinking and I made a bad decision. Um, in Spanish, it's usually a lot more forceful and insulting, right? I, I'm getting amens, right? Um, and so I think it's, to be honest with you, I'm not sure if, if it's the same translation in Spanish. Does anybody know in Galatians and a Spanish translation of the Bible, is it common for it to say, Galacianos estúpidos or no? Yeah, it does. Okay. All right. So I also don't know what the Greek says which would be really where we're going to get to the heart of the matter. Nevertheless, we have a sense of what this word means, right? It means not thinking right. It means not using what you got or just not having it there, perhaps, right? A lack of intelligence, maybe. Why is Paul questioning whether or not the Galatians have intelligence? Because for him, there's something that's so fundamental, so basic, to receiving Christ, to living in Christ, that if you're getting this thing wrong, then you either didn't receive Christ or you're not intellectually have the capacity to keep up with what he's talking about. So what's he talking about? What's this fundamental thing? I want to learn only this from you. Did you receive the spirit from works of the law? or from faith in what you heard. And he asks again, are you so stupid? After beginning with the spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? So he's making this dichotomy. It can't be both ways. Salvation is either from the spirit or it's from works and flesh. You might say, hang on a minute, Father Benjamin. We say faith and works, and you're right. But one of those things is primary to the other, and that's faith. Faith and the Spirit and the encounter with the living God comes first, and that's a free gift. It's a free gift. And so if we try to make works primary, we get in trouble. That's where we get into heresy. Are good works important? Yes, let there be no mistake. Why? Because works are the legitimate fruit that is always born from real faith. If there's real faith, there's always going to be works to accompany that faith. But Paul is seeing the church in Galatia, and they're kind of sliding down this slippery slope of running back to the exterior, to the works, to the law, to the flesh, right? to the false self, to an inauthentic encounter with God, to a superficial, shallow encounter with God. 
So, let's not find ourselves stupid in the eyes of St. Paul. Let's make sure that we're putting a good, healthy, well-rounded encounter with God first and understanding that what comes from that is a gift that we did not earn. And then remembering that in receiving those gifts comes a responsibility to go and bear fruit, to share it with others, to do good things. Our Gospel from Luke has to do with prayers of petition and seeking things that we need in prayer. God tells us to pray with persistence, and he says that if we seek and knock and ask, that we will receive, we will find, the door will be opened. Please note that he does not say that you will find exactly what you want that the door might not be opened on your time frame. Lest we fall into the error that when I pray in the name of Jesus, I'll get what I want, when I want, how I want. If that's the case, then we, we might not as well have any kind of like real relational prayer going on at all because now we're just making demands of God. And now we're the ones who are in control. So rather... I think we might find ourselves, in Paul's eyes, equally as stupid as these Galatians if we think that we can just tell God how to be God. That when we pray, we pray with persistence because we're going to continue to look. He will provide. It might not always be in the way that we think. and It might not always be on our time. But the, the prayer will be answered. God's will will be done. And it's our job to conform ourselves to his will, not the other way around.